you do a lot of um, fantasy work and you've talked about like book covers and things like that. Like what, how, how long have you been doing stuff in that type of realm? I grew up reading fantasy novels. I always love like the book covers and the art that accompanied it, you know, just like really kind of takes you away to a completely different world where, you know, it's, um, you know, like it's <laughs> as an introverted kid, you know, you end up reading a lot of books. Yeah. Uh, so that, that became, you know, a way I wanted to express myself. Like I really like enjoy the sword and sorcery kind of environment uh, and the, in the aesthetic as well, you know, all this great artists that have come before like working with uh, doves and dragons, like Brom and um, uh, Michael Whalen. And uh, I, I've gotten to interact with uh, some who are a little more contemporary than that, like Michael Sass and Aaron B. Miller. He, he, lo- he lives in Chicago. He's done a lot of like magic card art. Oh, really? Um, but these guys are all very like painterly and, gestural with like their uh their illustrations so that's something i really take to like i'm not a fan of photo textures and uh overly rendered or like airbrushed over 3d models like that's not where i want to take my art right you like to draw it directly like even if you're working digital you're saying you like to Mm -hmm. paint it inside of a painting program not use like a blender or something like that and then yeah it's still my hand making marks yeah it's mm-hmm. the only one I can, so I can only relate to this with the knowledge that I have from this weekend, because I got a whole lot of, uh, like 12 or 15, uh, Conan, the barbarian books. So <laughs> I, I know Tim Kirk, that's about, that's about yeah. the, because he did a lot of the illustration in there. So yeah, it, and there are some I, astounding illustrators who have worked on Conan. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it's just, <laughs> they just blow my mind. And th- that's the thing for the longest time growing up, I did not understand Dungeons and Dragons, but I would get the books because the artwork mm-hmm. was always fantastic. But I love the yeah. imagination of it too. And that's that's the thing. Like when you're creating this stuff, I guess it's I, I know that you've uh you you actually have done book covers, right? Uh I've only done one that's been published. Uh the other a lot of the ones in my portfolio right now are just like me imagining a scenario where this could be used as a cover. And that's kind of what I'm getting at is like, so I get it when you have a book and it's like, okay, this is what happened in the book. Now, when you sit down to draw something, like, how are you coming up with it? Like, do you go like, here's, I don't know, maybe I'll do a dragon or, you know, I I guess what's the process behind doing something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, And that's something like I'm constantly refining that process, but um, I'm I'm a big fan of the big impactful illustration rather than like a sequential story. Right. Uh, But, you know, you're going through like there are any particular characters that just like leap into your mind as being like very visual in a way or really critical to the story. Are there certain themes that you want to emphasize? Like, is this... And then you think of visual ways to communicate that, like, oh, this character is really like weak and pathetic, like versus this guy is the, uh, you know, the, the seven foot tall over muscled barbarian who's just going to charge into battle without thinking. Like, how yeah. can I represent that in terms of like his pose, the composition or, you know, um, like the how you how you arrange those elements on a composition tells that story that you read in like three seconds. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, being able, I mean, and that's the point of the book covers too, is to get people involved. I mean, even going to, mm-hmm. say, the comic book art, there's a thing where um, now uh, most comic book, uh, comic books don't even, like the cover is not even representative of what's inside. It's to get you to pick up and open it. And it's, just, you know, oh, there, yeah, there was a whole series of like, they just had painters who weren't even comic book artists doing right. covers. Yeah, I I was hearing stories of like way back in the day in DC Comics, like you could just walk into their building and like go knock on the editor's desk. And like um, these guys, like I think Bill Sinkevitz was talking like, like you could just sell cover art like, hey, I did this uh, art. Do you want to buy it as a cover? And yeah. they were just like, yeah, we'll find a use for that. And uh, <laughs> Put it in the pile over there. <laughs> yeah. And then an- another panel I-, I went to at a comic con with Adam Hughes. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with any of these like i love comics as well uh, even though like that's not my primary whole shelves style. over there <laughs> there you go but yeah adam hughes he did a cover for tomb raider and he was waiting for them to get back to him what the story was about so he could get drawing it and uh you know like they just were like yeah yeah we'll get back to you and they just never did and it was getting close to the deadline so it was just like 
F it. I'm just going to draw a cheesecake <laughs> illustration. So right. he drew like Laura Croft by a pool. It's like sunset in Florida or California. And then uh, the book gets published and he takes a look at it and she's like running through the Himalayas. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even have anything to do with it. Yeah. And they published it with the cover just like that. 